everybody, welcome back to the Everyday Saturday Podcast. Sam Crowley with my buddy Murray Miller. I'm going to bring out Murray in just a second. Here's a great story. Well, I think it's a great story. I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But Murray, if you're watching this on video, you can see him. He's got that thing called the family business. That's the that's the podcast that we just launched for Murray a couple months ago. And it's awesome because it talks about residual income, financial freedom, taking all the fear and all the pain and the anxiety away from money and how not to worry about it and all that stuff. So Murray and I hit it off a couple months ago. He's been an amazing client. Sometimes your clients turn into great friends and that's awesome what has happened with Murray and myself. So we're going to turn this into a regular feature. And I thought about Mondays with Murray because it's catchy and I like catchy stuff, but I don't think one day's enough. So anyway, Murray Miller, how are you? Oh my gosh, Sam. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. This has been a long time coming and I'm excited about it. This is great. Yeah. And you know, we, uh, Murray heard me on a podcast, so he hired me to build out his and, and also with his online business to family business. And then I, you know, as I'm working with Murray, I'm like, geez, this guy's got it going on, man. I mean, you know, some people just talk the talk. I'm like, no, Murray's got this thing figured out. He's got a couple of houses. They're paid off. He's making a ton of money, but he's not one of these guys that, you know, I make all this money, but you can just tell. So Murray, we have so much like, this one episode is not even going to do it justice. So I want to really throw you into the everyday Saturday community because I get this question all the time. You know, I'm not free. I'm not free. So I want to be free, but it's too late or I don't have the skills or I don't have that. So, I mean, we have so much to unwrap here, Murray, but let's just start with, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you live? Family, just things like that. So give us an idea of the kind of a day in the life of Murray Miller. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. So I grew up in the uh, Boston area. Uh, so born and, born and bred up here in uh, Boston, Massachusetts area. Um, I have been an entrepreneur all my adult life. I think I actually started out in my youth when I started a paper route and shoveling driveways and mowing lawns and doing all that stuff. Um, because I came from nothing, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story when people are able to pick themselves up coming from a lower middle class family, broken family, mom and dad separated when I was very young, two siblings, uh, you know, and we all had to kind of fend for ourselves. And, and mom was great. You know, she worked two jobs. She did what she had to do. Um, but I think the thing for me is I didn't want to be a burden on my mom because I loved her so much and everything that she was doing for us. So I went to work early to figure out this money thing. How do I develop something so that I have income so I don't have to burden my family with my needs and, and the things that I need to, uh, you know, we all need to survive. And I think money became something that um, it, it became a source of power uh, because it allowed me to free my mom from the fear. I, you know, I sat there um, many nights and watched my mom, you know, over at the dining room table, looking at her checkbook and looking at her bills and being in tears. And it just, you know, it impacted me forever. Yeah. Uh, still to this day, you know, I still have those visions, you know, you keep, some things you can't unsee, they say, right. Yeah. So uh, that, that was my story on my first venture into entrepreneurship. And I have been a student of the financial services industry and a student of residual income and a student of, protecting yourself and building a financial wall around your family. And I had this vision of building a podcast and I went on a mission. I I'd listened to literally without exaggeration, thousands of podcasts. I just, as a regular thing, I would listen to sometimes two and three a day. And um, I heard you as a guest speaker on a podcast and I had already interviewed three or four different companies and people to help me get the podcast started. And they were all good. I, nothing against any of the people that I talked to, but I resonated with you, Sam. You came from a similar background. You went through a lot of adversity. You were a family man. You, you know, all the things that you said. And then when you started talking about how your podcast had just been born and the way that you do it, and you sit in a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot and <laughs> let it rip. And just, I was like, this is my guy. This is, this is the guy I have to, I have to reach out to Sam and find out what this guy's all about. And certainly I booked a call with you and the rest is history, man. I'm so happy that we, we got to know each other and that we're friends and, and that now we're doing great things together. Yeah, boy, there's so much just in that statement. I guess you probably talked to like real companies and not some guy that just Zoom called you from his, you know, farmhouse in Cincinnati, Ohio and says, hey, right. I'm a guy. Not only do I do the calls, I do all the work by myself with you one on one. I think 
the intro call was about six minutes before you go. And I remember you go, all right, I right, just send me the agreement. Just send me an agreement over. Just send it over. So yeah, I was sold before I even talked to you just because I knew you were raw and real. I, I listened to your podcast that you did with Susan. I don't know, three or four times. And yeah. I, I tore it apart and I knew all the, all the elements and I was trying to read between the lines and I, I, I knew you were my guy right away. I had no idea, you know, how it was going to develop, but I knew that I wanted to work with you. So that six minutes was just a formality for me. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Cause I always talk to when I tell you know people that want to, you know, do the coaching and consulting thing. And I want to get into your financial services business and what was some of the most asked questions that you've had from clients. That's my next question for you. But you know, people say, well, how do I find individuals and I, I need to sell? I need to be the world's greatest salesperson or woman or man. I'm like, no, you don't. You got to find somebody who's the closest to the pin for you. So a little tap in putt as opposed to somebody 150 yards out to use a golf analogy. And you were closest to the cup in my sphere because you wanted a podcast. Your desire was high. Money wasn't an issue as far as how much does it cost and all that. You're just ready to go. So there's people out there that are ready to go, but you can't beat the fish into the boat and you're never going to say the right thing to the wrong person. So from a business perspective, you and I connected so well because my messaging hit you at just the right time, you know, and if it wasn't the right time, then we wouldn't be doing business together. But um, anyway, Murray has a background in financial. I mean, financial, I don't even want to say financial planning because that's boring, but mm -hmm. give me an idea of what was your financial services business that you ran, that you owned. That's my first question. What, give us an idea of what that was like. And secondly, I know you have an incredible passion to help people become financially free and build a wall around their financial uh, selves, you know, for lack yeah. of a better word. So it's a two-part question. Give me an idea of what your business used to do you, that you ran previously that was your real quote unquote business and then what were some of the pain points that your clients had that's awesome great question so the end game was uh i, I recently sold these companies that i'm about to tell you about so um most of the financial services businesses that i had that were the truly businesses that had a building and had employees and had management and all those things they're gone i now only take on clients just like you people that i know are hearing my message and that want to work directly with me Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's been, it's been quite a shift that I had a big company for many years and, and I sold them. Um, but the financial services business that I was in was completely focused on one particular area of financial planning, which was college funding for high school families. And the reason I, I focused in that one area is because I didn't have the opportunity to go to college. I only went to a couple of years of, uh, community college that I put myself through because I didn't have the means to do it. Not that, not that I didn't have the desire and not that I didn't have the grades. I could have done all that. I just didn't have the means to do it. So it made a lot of sense to me to help other people figure out how to send their kids to college and do it in the most tax efficient manner. So that's where I focused my business. And I worked with high school families and I ended up doing probably 50 workshops a year at 50 different high schools throughout the year, sometimes two and three at the same high school over a period of time. And then I grew the business nationally and I trained over a hundred advisors to do what I did. And I developed software so that they could use the software to, to help their clients in that one myopic area of financial planning for college. And that was a brilliant business. And after I decided to sell those businesses, because I was pursuing another passion that I have in the network marketing space, which could be a whole nother podcast, I, I decided I wanted to take people to the next level. Now that they basically drained their savings and all their resources to pay for college, how are they going to somehow build a robust retirement account? Because now it's about me, right? It's not just about what I, I have to do for my kids. So I went into the next level. And that's where I help people building a financial wall around their family, not just from the standpoint of having a financial plan, but also having a way to build a residual income into that financial plan and do it in the most tax efficient manner. But Murray, you got all these rich friends and people. I, you can't even relate to me, man. I'm a plumber making $47,000 a year. I barely got, I'm unplugging from this thing, man. I didn't know I was getting into some rich guys. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't help me. I love it, Sam. So I, I actually just did a podcast today before our podcast, before this uh, guest speaking on your podcast. And I actually talked about that. Most people feel I can't start. I certainly am not going to work with a, a financial coach, financial strategist, financial planner, any of those people, because I don't have enough money. I don't make enough money, so I can't do it. Here's the bottom line. What I tell people is first thing we want to do in your life is we want to try to eliminate the bad debt that you have. And we, got to need, we need to put together a plan for that. That's number one. Number two, 
we need to agree that you're going to start paying yourself first before you pay any other bills. If you can't pay yourself first, then we need to we need to readjust the way you think. We need to get into your head a little bit because you are the most important bill that you possibly can pay. So you have to take a percentage of your earnings every single paycheck and you have to put it away for yourself. Where you put it is irrelevant at this point. You have to put it away for yourself. And people say, well, how much is that? I don't know how much I can do. I tell people, whatever your age is, add a zero to it. You're 37, 370. You're 47, 470. You're 57, 570. Whatever that number is, that is the minimum amount I want you to start putting away first before you pay any bills. And there's no excuses. There is nothing that can get in your way from doing this. This is a priority in your life because there is no better feeling in the world like having financial security and financial freedom. And this is how it starts. Mm. So I can talk to the plumber and I can talk to anybody that at any level, doesn't matter where you are at. If you're, if you're crushing it, there's, there's probably more room for more savings. If you're not and you're just getting started, there's a way to get started. For a lot of people, there's a lot of month at the end of the money, though, even with that. And so I look, I'm buying everything you're selling, but I also want to play devil's advocate with you as well. Yeah. You know, I got credit card bills in the tens and thousands of dollars. Um, I'm not even putting a dent in those bills, just paying the interest. And you're telling me to pay myself first. How do I can't even like my mind can't even resonate. Let's say I got a visa bill for eight grand. You know, if I can, if I pay myself first, that means I can only, instead of put 300 on the visa bill, I can only put, you know, 80 bucks or a hundred bucks on there. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. So everyone has a, a unique situation, you know, investments are risky, but what's more risky is having huge debt. Yeah. So um, one of my recent podcasts was all about that. It was about uh, the financial genius within us all. And I used, uh, you know, a, a couple of examples. One of them is becoming debt free. So debt free would be the first thing on my horizon for someone that is not at zero trying to move up, but below zero that they're, you, you know, you're, 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 you you have to get your way out of a hole before you can start moving towards a mountain that you're building. Yeah. So that would be the first thing for a person like that, that has, um, you know, high credit card debt, high consumer debt. Let's get you out of debt. Let's figure out where you're leaking money and let's get you out of debt. And that's how, that's how we would start with that person. So what about a crazy guy like me that went back in 2005 this i don't even know if i told you a story you might absolutely have a full-blown coronary if when i tell you what i did with my 401k money i've heard it all maybe not at all but i've heard a lot i drained my entire 401k okay uh, when i when i left my job uh to launch every day is saturday because i just i had that much of a passion for it so i blew through 300 grand like a drunken sailor just throwing money at you know marketing and back when i started websites were five grand to build them there was no click funnels or anything like that you know you want you had to hire someone to get coding done and all of that and that's just a silly little dumb page that had html coding and things like that because nobody knew how to build a website and if you ever wanted video oh my gosh like that's like the end of the world so i spent all my money on marketing and everything like that and I had my financial guy saying, dude, you realize for every dollar you're paying a 10% penalty and 28% to the government taxable on all of that. I said, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going for my dream, man. I'd, I'd rather live a tent in a tent in my backyard than to have all this money in my retirement. And then, you know, as the money started going down, I say, geez, man, this is getting a little bit dicey for a guy with three kids under the age of five. Now, to date, it's all worked out. You know, the brand has been built and things like that. But my, I, I tell you all of that to say, don't have a heart attack, okay? And secondly, that what if somebody did say, hey, Murray, you know what? I want to go for my dream. I want to be like you. I want to be free. I'm not free. I'm going to a job every day. Yeah, I'm making 100, 200 grand a year, but I'm not free. If a buddy of mine wants to play golf or go fishing or my spouse wants me to take a quick, you know, impromptu vacation, I can't do that. And so if I stop working, my mortgage doesn't stop getting paid. My three car payments don't stop being made. How do you, how do you, cause you are a coach in this business, in the financial business. What would you tell somebody who's they're just like, you know what I mean? Like I want to go for it, but mm, I'm not giving up 200 grand a year in salary. I, I, I have to tell you your, your story first and foremost, before I actually answer that question is I never heard that story before. And oh. <laughs> I, I love that story because you remember the story about our first president, Washington, crossing the Delaware, getting to the other side and burning the boats. Yep. And why burning the boats, guess what? Those men knew there was no retreating. There was no way back. And that's how they won. Yeah. 
you burned the proverbial boats when you opened up that 401k, took all those tax penalties and tax cuts, and then, then ripped through that money. There was not even a chance you weren't going to be successful. It mm -hmm. didn't even exist in your mind. It wasn't a possibility. Three little ones, a wife you love, a house, all the things that you needed. And that's why your, pro your podcast is, is where it is today with millions and millions and millions of downloads and how many loyal listeners you have. That, that is why, Sam, because yep. you burned the boats. So that is um, crazy. As crazy as, as it sounds, it's crazy people that mold our world. And that's what you did. And that's how you've changed lives. So um, I'm not opposed to someone taking a risk, whether it's calculated or it's just 100%, you know, uh, if, if it's your dream, if it's your passion, if it's your fire, if it's what gets you out of bed every morning and you really can't do, you see yourself doing anything else. And I know from the, from the stories that I've heard about you, that you actually um, were ridiculed by a lot of people. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, and, and at one point you had to go with your tail between your legs back to work and and work for people that you used to work for you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and you did that. And guess what? Why? Well, I mean, you said there were people making jokes. Hey, Sam, every day is not Saturday. Every day is Monday to you. Ha ha. Guess what? That probably fueled your fire even oh, yeah. more to put you on the place that you are today. So I'm a big believer in dreams and passion, my friend. I don't think anything replaces that. And, you know, my daughter went to school for entrepreneurship at Babson College here in the Boston area, which is the number one school for entrepreneurship in the world. Oh, wow. And when she did, well, yeah, she, when she started going for, to this college and they started talking about entrepreneurship and stuff. I said, I thought entrepreneurship was just people that found a, a problem and solved it. I didn't know you went to college for it. I had no idea there was a whole, there was, there was learning around this whole thing that we, yeah. me and you, people like us, were just passionate about. We didn't have to learn anything. We just found a problem, solved it, and got passionate about it. Now it's just being, it's being taught at top universities around the world. So uh, kudos to you, my man. I mean, yeah. that's just a great story. It is. It's, I hope it inspires your listeners and it and inspires them to do things that they're passionate about because life is short, man. I got, I got friends and family members that have gone through some health challenges right now that suck, yeah. you know, chemo, radiation, all that stuff that we just don't even want to talk about. And, you know, we're, we've been in lockdown for how long, 18 months longer than that uh, with, with the pandemic that's worldwide. Take nothing for granted. Go after yeah. your passions. Yeah. Amen. Boy, that's a, that's a great message. I just think we've, you know, Murray, now we're going to make this a regular feature instead of Mondays with Murray, maybe it's money with Murray or, you know, something along those lines, because Murray's going to be the, uh, the, the uh, money matters with Murray. <laughs> money matters with Murray. That still sounds a little stuffy. You're more sexy than that, man. We're more sexy than money. Okay. But, You'll figure it out. You got, you got a good, you're good at messaging. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I do, man. That's kind of what I do. But I think so many people need to hear this because it's, it's a perfect, I think, uh, hand and glove fit with the everyday Saturday community because you know, Saturday is not a, not a circumstance. It's a mindset. You know, every day is a Saturday. If you love what you do, then, you know, the old adage is you don't work a day in your life. And what Murray's been able to accomplish, not only with himself, but with the people that he coaches is helping them really create a lifetime full of Saturdays. That's why I want to have him on the podcast. Just kind of kick things off. You can get used to that Boston accent. You can get used to his voice and hearing him inside of here, but then awesome. I think there's a success accent as well, Murray. Why don't we wrap it up? I just want to share this thought with you and see what you're, what just hit it over to you, man. Balls over in your court. You know, there's accents. There's, there's Russian accents. There's American accents. There's Spanish accents. I think there's a success accent. I think when you start speaking a certain way, you attract people into your life. No, like you and I, you know, we hit it off because we have that success accent. It's not that failure doesn't happen. Of course it happens. It happens in spades when you're an entrepreneur, you know, um, but you also do not uh, play that victim role in the sense of, hey, Murray, let me tell you about all the bad things that happened to me and why I can't be successful, you know? So would you agree with this thought process that the way you show up on a daily basis, regardless of the challenges in your life, allows you to attract like-minded, successful, even more successful people want to be around you because of your attitude? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I was, I, I'm, I'm a listener, by the way, of every day is Saturday. I'm one of your most loyal listeners now. And I will tell you that um, one of the interviews you did was with the greatest motivator of all time, Les Brown. Yeah, he is amazing. 
And, you know, he will talk about that success journey, that success mindset. And he will also talk about who you hang around with is who you become. And that you are typically a product of the environment of the five people that you hang around with the most. And you have to look at that. Who are the five people that you hang around with the most? You're, you're going to make somewhere between, according to less, ten and $15,000 a year of what those people make. And if that's okay with you, yeah. that's fine. But if people are somehow bringing you down and you don't realize it, and it could be even close friends and family members, you need to reconsider <clears throat> Excuse me, where you want to go with your life by choosing wisely the people that you associate yourself with and the things that you hear that go through your brain. There's also what we hear, you know, we have those on our shoulders, we have, uh, you know, the naysayer and we have the positive thing that we all hear in our own head. You've got to flick that naysayer off more times than not. All of us, I don't care how successful you are, we all have those people, that voice, I should say, in our head that tells us we can't do something or we shouldn't do something or all the bad things that could happen if we try to do something. That's what I want to say is that success accent is getting yeah. rid of that negative talk in your own brain and yeah. hanging around with people that are positive, uplifting and are working towards something great. I love it. Last question. I know they said the last one would be the last one. This is really the last <laughs> one. Almost the last one. How long would it take the average Joe or Jane? I know there's a lot of variables, but I want to become financially free. All right. I want to be like Murray Miller. Murray really, look, I know you hear these podcasts that I'm financially free. No, Murray's really financially free. Okay. And uh, by the way, what's your definition real quick, 30 seconds or less of being financially free, financial freedom? Financial freedom is simply not having to work in order to having enough money to cover your residual bills, the things that are going to come in with or without you, what, you, you know, whatever you do, you know, your, your light bill, your mortgage, if you haven't paid it off yet, your automobile, all those things, having those covered without having to get out of bed or go to work. That's financially free. And um, how, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope. Well, go ahead. How long would it take an average Joe or Jane, if they started working with you, right. to become fine? And I know there's a lot of variables. How much money? What are your expenses? On average, throw out the high, throw out the low, the fastest, the best, throw out the worst person who ever does anything. In the middle, how long would it take if Sam Crowley came to Murray Miller and said, Murray, I'm not financially free. I want the blueprint. How long would it take me to get there? Well, I can tell you for me, all right. And like you said, there's so many variables with other people. But for me, um, it took me about seven years. Okay. So some people could do it in two or three, depending on how aggressive they were, what kind of money magnet they were. And some people could take longer. But for me, it was, it was paying off both the mortgages on both our houses. It was having a very robust uh, you know, retirement account and having a high six figure residual income. And that took somewhere in that neighborhood between five and seven years to make that happen. Now it could happen sooner, it could take longer. It just depends on the person, the amount of work they're willing to put in and the amount of discipline that they have. But we can certainly develop a blueprint. Yeah. No matter what, people have to follow the blueprint, but we, we can certainly develop a blueprint for someone to follow. Money magnet. That's the title of our next podcast, how to become a money magnet. Will you remember that? Cause you're, you're, uh, you got a sharp. Absolutely. I do. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and I already forgot <laughs> the last <laughs> question you were talking about. Oh, how much money did you have to generate in those seven years to become financially free? Oh, that's a good question. I don't even know that number off the top of my head. I knew that I knew that what, what I was trying to do, I was aggressively paying down the mortgages. So I was paying well more than I had to pay. And I was paying it quicker, like not just monthly, but biweekly. Um, I was generating, so whatever money I was generating, I was putting towards that. I was paying off the credit cards as quickly as I possibly can, typically in full every single month and trying not to rack those up, trying to pay cash for the things that I could pay cash for. So it was a combination of eliminating debt and saving at the same time consistently. And, uh, you know, it's turned into millions. That's, you know, that's awesome. But it, it obviously it takes time. And I think, it, you know, there are there are peak earning years that people are going to have. You don't have to be making a fortune right now to make this happen. You can start out slow. I if you if, if anyone wants to listen to my um, podcast, yeah, go ahead. some of the episodes talk about residual income, which talks about building a side hustle. I'm a big believer in having multiple streams of income in order to get you there. And that can be done. We all have the same 24 hours, but there's ways 
to build you know multiple streams of income and that that probably is going to help everyone get there faster yeah so i'm going to throw this out there we'd have nothing there's guys there's literally nothing to buy right now. i, I just i want to bring value to the community but if you want to figure out how to get this done and get it done very quickly shoot me an email sam at everydaysaturday.com and just put murray miller in the subject line and i'm going to forward that directly to murray and he's going to call you you'll call would you can you call in anybody that Absolutely. listens to the I'll, 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 we can send up we can set up a link sam uh, if we want on on the calendar but yeah i'd love to talk to your yeah. listeners i mean we probably have a lot in common if they're listening to your podcast so for sure we can we can work together to make that yeah. happen and we'll figure out a more streamlined process. But for right now, the main thing is the main thing. If you're somebody who wants to, and look, this is legit. I mean, it's not, you guys know me, you listen to my podcast. I throw compliments around like manhole covers. All right. It's not like I'm out there pimping the latest and great. I don't, ha- I don't even promote anything on my podcast. It's that book a call with me, you know, to help uh, yeah. get your message. But if you would right. like to chat with Murray as the money coach um, and figure out, hey man, how can I get to be financially free? Send me an email, sam at everydaysaturday.com. Put Murray Miller in the subject. I'm just going to forward it over to Murray. He's going to get your contact information and he'll call you. Um, and we'll have, a, we'll have a page set up down the road. But this podcast was to get to know Murray yes. and start thinking about putting together your financially free blueprint. So Murray, I don't know, man. I think, uh, you know, without this, uh, uh, first of all, the one thing I had to, Murray knew about this podcast, there was going to be no questions sent to him ahead of time. No prep, no, hey, Murray, I'm going to ask you this about, we gripped it and ripped it, man. I think we did pretty good for the first episode. No, I love it. I love it. I can't wait for the next one. I got, I have so much more I want to share with your, uh, your listeners. And I love, I just love doing interviews with you now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to get this interview and just pop and just put it on my podcast as, yeah. as a, you know, as, as something that my people can listen to as well. So everyone can share it. Isn't it funny how two guys here got no agenda. It's like, it's like, hey, Murray, uh, if I send somebody, do I get paid for it? You get paid. We're just like, hey, uh, we had no plans. Murray had no idea, by the way. Swear to God, he had no idea I was going to have somebody email me and I was going to forward to him, you know, like it's 1997. Oh, Murray had no, I had no idea he was just going to put it on his podcast. That's what you do when you, you, you don't care who wins. You don't care who gets the credit. You just want to help people. Like we want to help people become financially free because we realize the powerful impact of being free, the choices you can make in life. Um, and I'm, I'm convinced our daughter who turned seven years old in a couple of weeks, who was given two hours to live may not have had that same outcome. If I wasn't free to be there and pray over her for 221 days uh, in the hospital and work with my wife. And there's just, there's so many ancillary benefits to being free that don't have anything to do with money. But if you're not free, you can't go and be there with the people who really need you to be there when they have that time of need. So there's just, there's so much to talk about, so much to cover. Yes. Murray, the next episode is how to become a money magnet. I love that topic right there. That's brilliant. Remember, you help enough people get what they want and you'll get what you want. Always, always. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's so obvious, but in this day and age, man, people are like, well, I'll do this if I can have that. You know, it's just, it doesn't work that way, guys. I mean, it's a short-term gain, no doubt about it. You'll make some money, but you'll lose so much more in the, in the end, man. And uh, in the end, what you want to do is put so much value out there that people are like, damn, this Crowley guy or this Miller guy, I can't imagine if I actually work with them one-on-one, the amount of value I would get because their free stuff is better than what anybody's paying for, you know? I love it. I love, yeah. love it. All right, I'm Miller, excited. Murray, Miller. I keep, call, I keep con- wanting to call you Miller Murray, so. That's okay. It works. <laughs> we just put it in a mirror turn it I'm around my wife, i gotta get checked for dyslexia because we're out in public and every time i'm like reading signs wrong and calling people the wrong name she goes i can't believe you speak for a little it's it's absolutely horrible <laughs> because you know that it, it's not your fault miller is a first name and murray is a last name so it could be <laughs> miller murray or murray miller i i I'm, I'm not faulting you for that i know but we've only shared eight thousand boxer messages and emails. Yeah. I, think by now, yeah. I, I would actually have it down more than just hey what's your name again so anyway <laughs> it's murray miller from the family business you can absolutely check his podcast out it's on itunes spotify stitcher iheart radio wherever you download podcasts you type in murray miller or the family business you'll find him there and uh, we'll have him back real soon talking about how to become a money magnet you can catch this video interview inside of our facebook group everydaysaturday.com forward slash fb group Murray, I can't wait to talk to you again on the podcast. Talk to you next time.